Okay, so here we go. Here we go, talking about something as uh, controversial uh, to some and polarizing to others as prophecy. And of course, I choose to do it in a public place. So that's just that's just lovely. That's how it's going to go. So uh, excited to jump into this idea. And it's a very interesting idea for me to talk about because I grew up in a very conservative movement. And uh, uh, there were some um, more uh, liberal or open or charismatic traditions uh, in my movement. But I grew up on the most conservative side um, of the conservative side <laughs> of that movement. So and we grew up uh, in a, um, with uh, not much uh, prophetic uh, speaking in tongue or things that people would call charismatic gifts. Um, none of that really was a part of what we believe. Matter of fact, um, we grew up and we were taught that those things were um, had ceased. And uh, our favorite uh, passage to debunk um, those type of um, experiences were, was uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 8 through 10, where it says, Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. And we and we taught that the perfect was the word of God, and the word of God had come. So that means that all gifts, that there are no gifts today, um, that the gifts were um, just for the first century, uh, because there was no word of God to authenticate um, God. But now that we have the word of God, we can show them in the word of God that God is true, and they can find faith there. And uh, so that's how we grew up. And uh and it's very interesting because it, it just produced a very uh, heady. Uh, I believe that we express our love to God um, with all of our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. That those are the four ways which we express our love to God. Those are the vehicles of expression of God. And so our vehicle of expression was only um, the mind and our strength. So very heady and very gift-oriented. So we, we did a lot of things where we used our gifts. We did a lot of things where... We did a lot of logic and intellect and that type of thing, but very little spiritual, um, very little um, emotional, no heart, um, no soul. And uh, so we're very one-sided um, type ministry. Um, now today, um, I do um, believe in prophecy, but I have uh, a difficult time with it because I didn't grow up in it. I didn't grow up in uh, a movement that exercised that or believed in that. And uh, as a result, I don't know what to always do with it. I'm also skeptical. and I. I believe some of that comes from my background. Um, um, I'm always looking for um, the prophet to be false. And uh, I'm always making sure um, that everything that the prophet speaks or says lines up with the word of God. And I do still believe that, that um, God will not prophesy something that contradicts the word of God. That everything that a prophet says must line up with the nature and will of God. And if I see something different, then I will uh, count that as a false prophet. So... Um, but I do believe that um, those gifts do remain. I believe that which is perfect is actually uh, when all things are made new, when the kingdom comes, when, 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 when Jesus comes and purifies the earth and uh, we're, we're, we're given new bodies and everything is right. And then there's no longer need for prophecy or knowledge uh, or special knowledge or speaking in tongues because all things will be understood. All things will be new. And I um, certainly look forward to that. Another interesting thing is I was just prophesied over last week. I was at a conference and uh, a lady who grew up charismatic um, was there and uh, she spoke these things about me and uh, to my wife and had my wife pass them on to me. And uh, I'm not really sure what they mean exactly uh, fully. One was that I'm loyal to my brother, but not to what my brother is loyal to. And uh, uh, I think by that she means my brother's very loyal to the movement we grew up in. And... Um, I'm not, I'm just loyal to the word of God, um, but um, I do have an affinity for it. So um, the second one was that um, I have a binding spirit of religiosity that desires to get into the recesses of my soul. Um, that's a great sentence, but I'm not exactly sure what that means. Um, I, I feel free. I feel open. I have friends across every tradition that I'm aware of. Um, for me, the word of God and um, Jesus and the spirit binds us all. If you believe Jesus is Lord, then you're my brother. So I'm not sure what that means. Um, but maybe, I don't know. But And then the final thing she said was that, um, that that spirit, that binding spirit, keeps tightening more and more. That there's a tug of war going on uh, inside of me. And maybe you hear it. Maybe you see it. 
um, and uh, and I wonder is it is it that I don't grow up from that experience? Is that why I'm 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 speaking the way that I am and not sure exactly what she means? Maybe it'll be revealed to me later, um, or maybe I'm just being honest that I don't know what she's talking about. So, um, uh, very interesting for me. So. Um, Walter Brueggemann said this, that the task of prophetic ministry is to nurture, nourish, and evoke consciousness and perception alternative to the consciousness and perception of the dominant culture around us. Boom. I love that. I mean, that's, that's just dead on. Um, when, when I think of prophecy, that's exactly what I think about, um, that uh, we are life changers and God speaks his word to us and through us and in us by his spirit, by his word, and we speak it in um, to one another and to the world, changing or um, producing an alternate culture, uh, the true culture, um, kingdom mindedness and the coming of the kingdom, the rulership of God. Um, so I'm, I'm all for that. I'm also looking it up. Um, BDAG says this about um, prophecy. Uh, first definition is the act of interpreting divine will or purpose. Um, that's called prophetic activity. Number two, the gift of interpreting divine will or purpose. Uh, the gift of prophesying, and then number three, the utterance of one who interprets divine will or purpose. Purpose. Um, that's just called prophecy. And uh, but personally, here's my um, my own definition of prophecy. Uh, it is speaking God's will, word, and way in a today voice, impacting the eternal. Uh, that's prophecy to me. So that's my my definition. That's how I see it. And uh, you know, when I look down the list, um, that. Uh, Dr. White gave us. I don't have an issue with anything on that list. Um, um, I'm I'm okay with all of it. I, I think God speaks in all those ways, and uh, um, so um, I want to end by sharing uh, my summary of Walter Brueggemann's goals of prophecy, and then uh, um, end with an appeal. So, um, Walter Brueggemann left four goals of prophecy. These are um, summarized. Um, to make it easier for me to understand. Number one, evoke an alternative community that knows it's about different things in different ways. Amen. Uh, number two, um, the second goal of prophecy is the prophetic is done in all aspects of ministry, including counseling, education, liturgy, and preaching. It speaks life into death. Yes. And I, I'm, yeah, so that's what I believe. I don't believe it's uh, just one person. Or I do, I do believe some people have a gift of prophecy and they're more gifted in a particular area, but I believe everything that the word of word that the people of God do has a prophetic function. I also believe everything has a pastoral function and everything has a priestly function and that's how we impact the world. Uh, number three, um, the third goal that Walter Brueggemann list is the prophetic is authenticated by the communal sharing of suffering. Uh, that'll preach and uh, um, yeah, that'll preach. I, yeah, I want to I wanna do a sermon series on that one. And then the fourth one, uh, Fourth goal is it invades despair so that the new future can be embraced. And that one, I need a little bit of that. <laughs> so um, the goal of prophecy is to invade the, the areas where there is hopelessness and to provide hope. And uh, I don't know how any believer could be against that. So I'm all for that. So here's, here's my final appeal. Um, if you are a grew up in a prophetic um, tradition, I invite you to share with me um, experiences, to share with me um, um, perspectives and paradigms uh, that maybe because I didn't grow up that way, um, I don't have. God bless.